Hello there Virgos, welcome to your weekly tarot reading. So um, in terms of your love life, I get a very strong singles vibe uh, for this week, okay? The first thing out of the deck here, we have the Hermit, and this is your energy where you are looking at somebody. You're possibly communicating with them from a distance, so there is like a geographical distance between you and the other person. You're wondering what they're up to, possibly, you know, texting, messaging each other really, really late into the night, trying to figure out their intentions, trying to figure out if they are seeing other people or if they are texting you or interested in you exclusively. But either way, there is somebody that you're prying on. Um, there's somebody that you're looking into. There's somebody that you've got your, you've got your little lantern on this person and you're trying to um, kind of like admire them from afar or trying to gauge their intention so I feel like many of you might be single um, the person that you're dealing with I feel like a very strong water sign vibe so I have here a Pisces a Cancer or a Scorpio and I feel like this is a person with a lot of options on their table. So they have like a lot of suitors. They might be very, you know, attraction is only skin deep, right? But I feel like this is somebody who's quite popular. They're, um, they have a lot of suitors. Their energy is really, really receptive. So that means they have trouble saying no. If they don't like somebody, they're still going to be very polite and, you know, and be nice and cordial. And so people might mistakenly think that, that person is interested in them and so they keep coming on to them and so you're dealing with someone who's a little bit uh, boundaryless and they don't know how to set up firm boundaries they don't know how to say no they have trouble saying no and they're overall a really you know everyone will say oh that's a really nice guy or that's a really nice girl so because of that they're very popular they um, exude a lot of um, I'm hearing like compassion and French friendliness and just someone who's really really likable people like their to be in their company they're easy to talk to they're not very judgmental and I feel because of that they might be a cancer you might be drawn to a cancer you might be uh, interested in a cancer also Pisces Scorpios are a little bit more like if I don't like you I'm going to let you know so I feel like you know it's, it's somebody that might be Piscean Cancerian in nature. Um, I also have as well a uh, an earth sign and this is uh, it's the devil so this is the Capricorn card okay either way you have somebody who's quite popular that you really really like and I feel like the attraction is so intense between you and this person the attraction is so strong. The two of you work great together. You might have different ideas about, you know, how you approach life, your philosophies, your ideologies. You might have a totally different way in which you do things. So with you guys, you're very systematic, okay? And it comes down to the courtship. You have to really get to know somebody before you even make up your mind whether or not they are dating material. So you can go on, you know, like one, two, three, four, five dates with somebody and still not be uh, falling in love with them because you still need to find out more information before you can, you know, ask them, you want to be my boyfriend, you want to be my girlfriend. So I feel like for many of you, you are really attracted to somebody you're still trying to figure them out you're still not at a point where you are 100 percent committed to them and what you're seeing is that you feel they're a little bit flirtatious which is a big no-no in your car in your book you feel like they have trouble saying no to people turning people down which is also another red flag you might also um, see a lot of pictures that they're they're posting online on social media um, they might have a lot of people um, flirting with them on social media, online. And this is the energy of the person you're dealing with here, the Seven of Cups. Someone who's very, very distracted with a lot of things going on in their lives. They have a lot of people that they're constantly surrounded by. They have a lot of suitors, a lot of options, a lot of choices. And this is a card about somebody who has attention problems. Uh, unable to concentrate, unwilling to commit, unable to get things done. So they're scattered and pulled in many, many, many directions. And they might be, you know, 
all together like um very distracted they have a lot of noise constantly around them they have a lot of things going on in their lives they might be uh, a mother or a father they have like children that they need to tend to so th their lives is like very other oriented whereas your life is very calm and it's very like um it's very contained you don't give your energy away to people that are drama you don't let other people's energies affect you you have a very systematic way in which you do your things in which you love in which you give your time in which you give your commitment and so you're better off on a one-on-one -on -one, you know level when you're meeting somebody you want to spend that one-on-one -on -one time and the other person just has a gazillion things going on and it's never just one-on-one -on -one. and so I feel like there are a lot of uh, things that you're considering about this person and you know the attraction is is definitely there and you know they are a really good person and that's why you overlook a lot of these red flags or you might feel like you know they're they're such a good person that these red flags are, are not really red flags as long as innately they are a good person and I feel like they are a really good person we have here the nine of cups and this is the energy of the other person as well where they're very sweet they're very likable but there are innate issues that keep getting in the way between you and the other person. You know, like, I, I feel like you're dealing with somebody who's really, really popular. And you're trying to get an in. Like, it, it's, it's almost like... And, and you guys are not flamboyant like the Leos or the Sagittarius or the Aries. You don't just charge right in and, you know, sweep away your, um, like, sweep them off their feet and, you know, uh, take them on your horse and, and ride into the sunset. So you're, you're not one of those types that, you know, go after the other person. You need a certain level of, like, reassurance. You need them to coax you along the way to let the, you know that they're interested. But because they have so many people at their side, it's really hard for you to find a way in. It's really hard for you to talk to them. I feel like you're also dealing with somebody that is multitasking, doing a lot of things, having a lot of projects, having a very robust social life or a very robust professional life. And they might be friendly, but emotionally unavailable as well. And so you're starting to realize this. But I feel like the attraction is still really, really, really strong between the two people here with the devil, where, you know, it's, it's a really strong um, magnetic attraction. And it feels almost like you're fearing this. You're fearing that you're just going to be one of the other person that uh, that's in their life, one of their uh, suitors, one of their groupies. You want to be the one to dominate. You want to be the one, the, the apple of their eye. You want to be exclusive. But I feel like with this person, it might be, there might be a, a big, big challenge getting the relationship off the ground. For those of you who are in coupled relationships, I feel like there is a huge, huge rekindling in the passion, the chemistry with another person. And um, you guys might have been, you know, working at cross purposes with each other. You guys might have had a lot of disagreements. There might have been a lot of problems and issues moving the relationship in the direction that you'd hope for because where you are at professionally, emotionally, might be in, um, might not be in accordance with where they're at professionally and emotionally. So both people definitely want the same things. They want to move forward. But the, the ways in which they start to move forward, it's like they're turning in different directions. They're spinning their wheels. And I feel like it's been really hard. It's been a big struggle to get the other person to see things from your perspective and to get them to move along in, in your direction. And it's almost like this, this required a lot of discipline. It required a lot of mutual understanding. It required a lot of patience. And this is the week where, you know, the, the patience, the work, the dedication, and the perseverance starts to pay off because you're getting a really good boost when it comes to the outpouring of love, the outpouring of appreciation from your relationship partner. 
I also feel like there might have been a major uh, mutual understanding, an understanding from your end on a very deep level that, okay, this person is not like me. And they're, it's not because they don't want the same things that I want. They, they might, you know, delay on the children. They might have children of their own and it's interfering in the way that, you know, the two of you come together. But I feel like there is a mutual understanding here as to why they're like that. So I feel like it's deep rooted and you have to shine the light on it to understand that, you know, they had restrictions in their childhood or they had issues in their childhood that contributed to the way that they are right now. There might not have been the structure and the foundation in their early childhood life that allowed them to be as goal-oriented, as structured, and as organized as you. And as a result of it, in their adult life, they're scattered, they're pulled in different directions, they have trouble concentrating, they have trouble getting things done, and they might not have had a role model to really shape them, to guide them, to give them, you know, that sense of direction. Whereas you yourself, you're very self-contained um, and you don't need that. But the other person, they're very other oriented. They needed that. There might have been a lot of restrictions growing up as well. And now as a result of that, you know, they fear success. They fear like worst case scenarios. They fear like as soon as I have something solid, it's going to be taken away from me. So I feel like you're reaching a very deep understanding between you and your partner. And a lot of it has to do with an, an, a major awakening, I feel, happening from your end, where it allows you to kind of, you know, be less critical and slip yourself into their shoes to understand their worldview and understand where they're coming from and why they are like this. So it's not because, you know, they don't have the same goals or want the same things. It's just they have, they don't have that clear, logical um, blueprint as to how do I get from where I am right now to, you know, from A to B in the most direct and concise way. Why does my life always meander? Why do the things that I touch just kind of fall apart? So I feel like the, the understanding, the love, the, um, the persistence and the perseverance to allow this person to be who they are while showing your love and giving them the emotional support, that's really going to help heal them as a person and it's going to help them overcome a lot of the, the trauma that they've dealt with, okay? So, for those who are single, I see a big water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, I feel like, you know, by the end of the week, you're going to have some type of a consensus, some type of an offer. You're, you might be making your offer, or they're going to be um, showing, they're going to give you that little nudge. They're going to be like, I'm interested. Like, I feel like a touch, uh, a compliment, uh, a witty remark or something. And then they kind of shyly smile and that's going to be your sign. That's going to be your sign that they're interested and you need to, you know, make a move and, and go forward with them. Okay. So that clarity is going to be coming in. And I feel like towards the end of the week for those dealing with a Capricorn in particular or another Virgo, um, if you're dealing with a Virgo, they're really interested in you. And uh, I don't know, two Virgos together, it might be amazing or it might be, you know, very, very um, prickly. So just um, depending on where you're at, but I think that should be interesting. And then uh, Virgo and Capricorns, uh, the Capricorn person is still kind of directionless. Doesn't mean it can't work, but they're still very scattered, very directionless. But I feel like there's very strong chemistry. Whoever you're dealing with, the chemistry is really, really strong. And I feel like, you know, whoever you're dealing with, they seem to be a very right hearted, like a bright. I, I think the word is bright that I'm hearing bright, <clears throat> very smart, possibly, or very like um, their heart is in the right place. Like they're a really good person. And I feel like you sense that. So you're able to overlook everything else. OK, other areas of your life, um, I wish I could just say, you know, you're headed in the right direction. Everything is going to be all peaches and gravy. And, you know, um, you're in the right place. You're professionally, you're headed into some type of a major, major breakthrough when it comes to your career, when it comes to um, your destiny. 
So we have the Fool and the Wheel of Fortune. The Fool is taking a brand new path, figuring out what is not making us happy, and then embarking on a new uh, journey, embarking, like taking a risk or even embarking on a new journey. For some of you, this is kind of like um, looking down, and I see this, like, um, you guys are very, very detail-oriented. And, you know, you, you don't forget to dot your I's and cross your T's. And a lot of the times in a work environment, too, um, you perform your role. You perform the, the, the function that you're, you know, hired on to do to the best of your capabilities. But I feel like sometimes you might miss the big picture. You might start to feel in, in a way where you're just like a cog in the machine, you know. Anybody can replace you. If you leave, somebody else can replace you. So in that way, it can feel like the work that you're doing is very mundane, is not super exciting, is not super uh, life-changing, nor is it inspiring. So I feel that element coming into the picture. And I also feel like you've been looking. You've been looking for other options. You've been looking, scoping, and kind of scanning the horizon to see like, okay, if uh, this is where I am, and some of you might be quite successful because I don't see financial lack. You have here seven pentacles, and I feel like some of you are making possibly, you know, 7000 a month, 70000 a year, which is a substantial amount of money, right? So I feel like you're at a point where, you know, um, security issues are not, like, so dire that you're staying in a job that you hate. I feel like for the majority of you. But then I'm also feeling with the Seven of Cups and the Seven, Two Sevens, it's a very spiritual energy. So you have some kind of a spiritual message coming through here. This is a card about, you know, distraction, first of all. Having a lot of options, it's, it's, a, it's like your mind is, is so much like a computer where if there is one problem, there has to be one solution. And then you're in an environment where it's like, there are so many possibilities, there are so many solutions, which is the best? And you fear making the wrong choice. So I feel like you're in an environment where it's very different from what you're used to. And it's almost like you fear doing the wrong things, you fear making mistakes. And you fear almost like there it's too open-ended. There are too many possibilities. How do I know, absolutely know, that I'm taking the best course of action? And so the bottom line here is that you, you've been looking around, you've been scanning the horizon, and you're just like, if I don't, if I'm not completely happy here, what other options available for me? What's gonna be what's my next step? If I don't want a demotion, if I want to, you know, stay within the same work environment, how do I advance? And I feel like you have a lot of skills under your belt. It's just a matter of looking to see what else is available for you. And I feel like something is going to be coming in with this Ace of Cups. Whatever has been kind of like out there in the ethers and you're kind of looking at it, it's going to solidify itself and it's going to show itself. And I feel like it's going to provide you with a new opportunity. So you're headed towards something that is going to be very expansive. For many of you, a job that allows you to travel, that allows you to, you know, not only look at the pictures of all these exotic places and location, but to actually implement them and be able to allow you to travel to all these places that you've dreamed about. And you've been wondering for a long time, you know, when is my big break going to come? And I feel like this is the uh, week where these dreams are starting to kind of manifest and take place and, and kind of form roots. And you're going to find a way to possibly make it a reality, okay? It's not like the offer is on the table, but it feels to me like you have a better sense of direction as to what you need to do and what organization, what company what position, what job you need to aim for so that you are completely happy. Um, I'm seeing here, it's funny how they're kind of reading it backwards, but what I do feel is in the current environment, you might be offered something like, hey, 
uh, like a retainer, you know, if you stay around, we're going to give you this big job in like six months down the line. And you're like, no, thank you. I think I'm going to do something a little bit more sure and a little bit more secure. So some of you might be turning down uh, work offers as well, or you might be turning down as well love offers where somebody is not very sure, it is a little bit too wishy-washy. You're just like, I want something a little bit more sure. So I'm going to say no to it. I'm going to go for something that's a little bit more stable and a little bit more solid. But either way, you're headed in the right direction. So I, I feel like your guys want you to know, waiting, this period of constantly waiting, 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 you don't need to wait anymore. Because the other, if you're waiting on people in particular to make up their mind, they're inundated with so many options. And I feel like if you're not option number one, um, then you don't want it. Okay, so you, you're taking on more of that Leo Aries trait. If I'm not, you know, the, that top slot, if I'm not the one, if I'm not your first choice, then I don't want it. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that you know what you want and you always know what your first choice is because you're very picky. You're very particular about what you like and what you don't like. And so if you find yourself as like the second or the third choice of somebody else, an organization, a love interest, you're just like, no, thank you. I don't want it. And then you're going to move on and find something that is more in alignment with you. So I hope the reading has been helpful for you, uh, Virgos, and I wish you the best. Okay, I'll be back next week. Take care.